My channel's full of exercises people would probably refer to as corrective exercises, but I have a gym and it's really important to me and I hope so you as well that we think about how we can actually improve our fitness and movement through strategic exercise selection, especially those who have asymmetrical posture or movement. I'm going to be discussing primarily the left ASC and right BC patterns, which are intertwined together. So if you haven't seen those videos or those articles, please go see that first before going forward with this video. As a general overview, most people have this asymmetrical posture or they start with it and build compensations on top of this, where we have a higher right hip and a lower right shoulder. And we have this weight bearing on the right side. So these ribs are pulled down into internal rotation on the right side. The right hip is pulled up and this side of the pelvis is also biased towards internal rotation. Because of this orientation right here, the right abs tend to be a little bit more shortened or overactive than the left abs. The left abs have this gap right here so they don't have as much leverage to pull down these left ribs right here. Now, this allows us to expand the left side of our chest wall, but that's going to come with a restriction because this left shoulder is being pulled back like this. There's going to be limited expansion and limited ability to create movement back here between the scapula and the spine. On the right side, it's the inverse. We have more ability to expand this right posterior chest wall. You can think of the right scap as this traditional wing scapula position where it's being pulled off of the rib cage and the muscles that help hold it onto the rib cage, such as the rhomboids, such as the low traps, such as the triceps and the serratus anterior, all secure this onto the rib cage. So they're gonna be a little bit more weak on this side. On the left side, we need expansion back here. We need the ability for the scapula to move further away from the spine. So we need the serratus anterior to work as a muscle of retraction of the rib cage to push the ribs back. And this is also accompanied by the left obliques, specifically the internal obliques and the transverse abdominis on this side. These deep abs on the left will help pull these ribs down and this pelvis up and help rotate the pelvis back on this side. So the abs on the left are a huge consideration. So for example, I might program three sets on the left and one set on the right, or flip-flop that for a different exercise. And that doesn't mean the entire program is asymmetrical, that's almost never the case. But what we can do is use some of more of the lighter accessory work, the arm training, the ab training, to help go after these imbalances. Let's start with the abs. So we generally want pretty strong abs on the left. And if we can elongate the right side abs with that, we can help balance out this asymmetry of the chest. So side plank progressions are going to be a really great way to do that. And here are some of those progressions that I like to use, starting with the easiest, ending with the most difficult. A great way to train both sides of the abs just in that alternating nature, which helps get that rib cage pumping from side to side would be an all four belly lift where we are moving from side to side. And that can be a really great way to get both sides. And it is really, really challenging. Now let's talk about some arms because who doesn't like a good arm pump, right? These right ribs tend to be a little bit more depressed and down. So we want to be able to expand that, which will help us restore this humerus to more of a neutral position because currently right shoulder internal rotation is going to be limited. And if we can expand here and pull the scap back on the right, we're gonna have much more success restoring this internal rotation measurement. So you should be able to do an exercise and retest your internal rotation on the right and it should be better. There's a couple of considerations that I take into account when trying to open up the chest wall on one side and restore internal rotation. The first is that if my chest is facing the ground, 
Air is a gas that follows the path of least resistance. So if I'm facing down, gravity will help me expand the chest more. We can use these face down positions with all kinds of things. We can do this for delt training, specifically the lateral delts. We can do this with tricep training to target the long head of the triceps and the triceps in general to help pull the scap down a little bit and open up the chest. All of the exercises and detailed walkthroughs are going to be found in the article I'm writing alongside this video in the description below. It will have everything you need, all the exercises I mentioned here, common mistakes, and a lot of good information. The other consideration is that we can get air into the upper chest specifically with more humeral extension where the arms are behind the body. And we can do that with something like a biceps curl with cable machine. Now when it comes to the left side of the body, generally what I'm going to try to do is sneak in a little bit of lateral compression on the left side. Air is a gas that follows the path of least resistance. I pull this down a little bit, that will open this up. And it will also, if we're doing it well, help expand this back left side as well. So we can do that with something just as simple as a lateral raise with a little bit of a side bend. That can be a great way to sneak some in. We can also do it with bicep curl variations. If I use a preacher curl position and I can create a little bit of trunk rotation, that's going to help push my ribs back on the left so I can open up that space as I curl. We could also do it and train both biceps in a deep squat position, which is a great way to open up the back side of the rib cage and get some inhibition or relaxation of those back extensors. The good thing is these principles don't apply to just the left and right side. Some people have the same problem on both sides of the body. For example, if you had rounded shoulders on both sides and limited internal rotation on both sides, you could just do some of the exercises I talked about for the right side on both sides. If you had rib flare on both sides, then you could just do some of the side plank progressions on both sides. And what you'll find is that as you peel back these layers of compensation that have built on top of the left AIC and right BC patterns, is that you'll see more asymmetries underneath and start to present themselves. Again, I'm going to reiterate that I can't give you a specific amount of sets or reps to do these exercises with because everyone has varying degrees of asymmetry. Some people need a little bit of asymmetry, some people need none at all, and other people need a lot. It's all just very context dependent. If their goal is to improve their asymmetries or they have some sort of pain or limitation with their movement. I'm always going to be using my tests to determine if I'm having success. So if I'm on the fence about something, I'm going to try and exercise with someone and retest the relevant range of motion that we're going to be looking for. So for example, if I was trying to improve someone's shoulder flexion on the left, which tends to be more limited, I would do something like that preacher curl and then retest them afterwards. And if I have an improvement in shoulder flexion, then that means that I'm on the right track and you can do the exact same thing at home or at the gym. If you're curious to learn more or if you're a coach, you can check out my biomechanics program. It has dozens and dozens of these exercises, all very specific and relevant to whatever goal that you're looking for. I hope that gives you some ideas. And if you're curious to learn exactly how I'd cue these exercises, again, go check out the article in the link in the description below.